Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another week of maths lessons. I hope that you've had a fantastic week weekend and you're ready for some more maths today. Now, as always, before we get going, there are a few things that you will need to, to collect. So for today's maths lesson, you will need a dry white pen, a white board, uh, or you, you could use the reverse of your 100 square that was in your home learning pack. Uh, a pencil and paper or your home learning book and a number line. So pause the video, go and collect the things, should only take you a couple of moments and then unpause the video when you're ready. See you in a moment. Okay, everybody, let's get started. Now, we are just going to think back to some work that we have done recently on our two times table facts. And we're going to start by counting together in twos. And as we count in twos, I'm going to highlight them on this little bit of the hundred square here. So are you ready to count? OK, here we go. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. And we're going to stop there. We could go further, but we're going to stop there because we have counted all the way up to 24, which is 12 lots of two. So those are our two times table facts up to 24. And we're going to need to remember those numbers for a little game that we're going to play in a moment. Now, one of the things that we found out before about our two times table facts is that they are all even numbers. So two, four, six, eight, 12, 24, they are all even numbers. Now then, we're going to need to use those numbers in just a moment because we're going to have another game of teacher versus children bingo. If you rem remember, we had a game of this a couple of weeks ago and I know because I saw a few photos of some of your bingo and lots of you had beaten the teacher because you got bingo before I did. So I would like to have a rematch and today I'm feeling confident and I think that I am going to win. So let's just remember how to do this. The first thing I need to do on my whiteboard is to divide it into six parts. And I'm going to draw a line across like that and two lines down. So now, now I've got six parts to my, uh, my whiteboard. And in each of those uh, boxes, I am going to write some numbers from my two times table. Those are the numbers that we've got up here. And let me see, I'm going to write a, I'm going to put a two. I'm going to put a six. I'm going to put a 12. Uh, I'm going to put 20, 24, and I think I'll put four. Okay, so I would like you to do, to do the same, to put uh, six numbers on your board. Don't do the same as me, otherwise you won't beat me, you'll just have the same as me. Okay, so pause the video here and fill in the numbers on your whiteboard. Okay, are you all done? Are you ready to play? So this is going to be our two times multiplication uh, bingo game. And every time you have got an answer to one of our number facts, cross it off. Now, if you do beat me, if you do get bingo, I would love you to take a photo of it and put it on our Facebook page. And if you do that, uh, by the end of today, if your picture is on there, I will choose somebody to win a fantastic prize, which we will send in the post to you. Okay. Are you ready to play? Okay, here we go. So first up, five twos. Five times two. Can you shout out the answer? Five twos is 10. Oh, I haven't got that one. Well then, if you've got that one at home. Okay, next one. Are you ready? Shout out the answer when you know it. 10 lots of two. 10 lots of two or 10 times two. The answer to that is 20. <gasps> I've got 20. I'm going to cross that off. There we go. There's 20. Did you get that one at home? Okay, let's try again. Next one. Shout out the answer when you know it. Two times two. Two times two. Two lots of two is four. I've got four on my board. Oh, I'm doing well. Okay, next one. 12 times two. 12 lots of two. What is 12 times two? 
12 times 2 is 24. And I've got 24 on my board. There we go. I'm going to cross that one out. Next up. 6 multiplied by 2. 6 multiplied by 2 or 6 times 2. 6 times 2 is... It's 12 and I've got 12. Oh, I'm doing really well. I've nearly got bingo already. I'm pretty sure I'm going to win today. OK, ready for the next one. And the next one is four times two. What is four times two? Shout it out if you know. Four times two is eight. Oh, I haven't got eight on my board. Have you got that at home? I think some people might be close to getting bingo already. Let's try another one. One multiplied by two. One times two. One times two is? One times two is two. And I've got it on my board. I can cross it off. There we go. I only need one more. How are you doing? Anybody got bingo yet? OK, let's do another one. Next one is nine twos. Nine times two. Nine lots of two is 18. No, oh, I haven't got 18. Oh, next one. Seven lots of two. Seven times two is 14. Oh, I haven't got 14 either. Let's try another one. Zero times two. Zero times two is, well, if you've got zero, if you've got nothing times two, nothing times anything is nothing. If you've got no lots of something, you've got nothing. Zero times two is zero. Eight times two. Eight times two is, oh, what is it? Eight times two? 16. Oh, I thought I had it. I've got six, but I haven't got 16. Next one. 11 lots of two. 11 times two. 11 times two is, what is it? It's 22. Oh, I still haven't got my last number. And next one. Three lots of two, three times two, that's two and two and two, two, four, six. I've got six. Bingo. Have I beaten you? I've got a feeling that was our last number. So I don't know whether I've beaten, beaten any, of, any of you. Remember, if you beat me, take a photo and share it so we can have a look. Well done if you did beat me. If not, well done to me. OK, let's carry on with our lesson today. Now then. We're going to carry on thinking about our two times table facts for just a moment because we're going to be using them to do something later on. So just as a recap, I've just got some quick questions here on our two times table. See if you can pause the video and have a go at solving these problems. So I'm going to give you about five minutes for this. Try and answer these questions and then you can come back once you've done them. I'll just quickly go through them. So number one says complete the calculations. Those are repeated addition. Number two says complete the calculations and those are multiplication ones. And then the last question says, how many groups of two are there in this array? I'll see you in a couple of moments, well, in five minutes, actually. OK, welcome back. How did you get on? Let's go through the answers. So number one, complete the calculations. Two, add two, add two, add two. That's four lots of two is eight. Then on to the next one, we have got two, add two, add two, add two, add two. There's one more two there. There's 10 lots of, uh, sorry, I told you the answer. There's five lots of two. And because that's one more two than we had before, I just need to add another, another two onto the eight. So two more is 10. Five lots of two is 10. Then onto the calculations. Now, if onto the multiplication calculations, if you were eagle eyed, if you were looking carefully, you will spot that these questions are in pairs. We've got two times four and four times two. Two times four is eight and four times two is eight. The two and the four have just moved around and it doesn't matter which way you work them out, the answer is still eight. We've talked about this before and there was a posh word for that. Can anybody remember the posh word that means we can do our calculations any way around? Commutativity, did anybody remember that? So two times four is the same as four times two and the answer is eight. OK, next one. Two times five is ten. And because we can do it the other way around, five times two is ten. Six times two is twelve. Two times six is twelve. What was that word again? That c c commutativity. Well, then, if you can remember that. And on to the last question. 
how many groups of two are in this array? Well, let's have a look. There are one, two, three, four, five groups of two. So the answer to that one was five, and five, group, five groups of two is 10. Well done uh, if you got those questions correct. So on to today's learning. And today's question is, how do brilliant mathematicians divide by two? Well, I'm going to give you a sneaky clue. If you know your two times table, your two times multiplication fact, you can use those to divide by two. And that's what today's lesson is all about. Let's start with a question. And here are some children playing a game. And to play this game, they need to get into two equal teams. How many will be in each team? So pause the video here. I'm going to give you two minutes to think about this question. You need to put these children into two equal teams. OK, pause the video. Come back once you've had a think. OK, welcome back. How did you get on with that one? Well, let's have a look. The children are playing a game. They need to get into two equal teams. Well, let's share them equally into two teams. There we go. And we've got one team there. And we've got another team there. And in each of those teams, there are four children. So the answer to this one was there will be four children in each team. Two equal teams of four. Well, then, if you got that one right, let's think of this question uh, a bit differently now. So still have got the same children. They're still playing a game. But this time, for this game, they need to get into twos. And another name for twos is pairs. So the question says, how many pairs will there be? How many lots of two will there be? Pause the video, think about this question uh, and see if you can come up with the answer. See you in a moment. OK, how do they get on with that one? Well, for this question, the, the children need to get into twos, into pairs. So let's put them into pairs. There we go. So we have got one, two, three, four pairs. So for this question, uh, the, the answer is there will, there will be four pairs of children. If you remember in the last question, we had to share them into two equal teams and there were four children in each team. For this question, we had to put them into twos and there are four lots of two, four pairs. So the maths was the same, the number sentences were the same, but the way we thought about it was different. So the first question was about sharing, sharing them into teams. And there were four children in each team. Eight divided by two equals four. Eight shared into two, uh, put into two equal teams means there will be four children in each team. And then we thought about it by putting the children into pairs, put them, in, them into groups of two. There are four pairs, four groups of two children, eight shared or put it sorry grouped into twos means there'll be four groups of two so eight divided by two equals four so the top one we shared the children children equally and then the bottom one we put them into groups of two so thinking about that i've got some more questions for you here so we're going to do a question now with some flowers and there are 12 flowers there are two parts to this problem the first one says the flowers are shared equally between two pots. So if we've got 12 flowers and we share them equally between two pots, have a think about what kind of question this is and uh, how we will work out the answer. And then the next part says the flowers are grouped into pots of two. So if we put them into pots of two, what kind of question is that and how will you work it out? Pause the video here. Think about what's the same about those two problems and what's different. Have a little think and then come back in a couple of moments. Okay, welcome back everybody. So what did you think was the same about these problems? Well, in both questions, we've got 12 flowers. In the first question, we are sharing them between the two pots. And in the second question, question we are putting them into groups of two. So the numbers are the same, but what's different is the first quest question is sharing. The second question is grouping. Let's look at our sharing question. OK, there are our two pots. Let's share the flowers equally between the two pots. One for you, 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 one over there, one for you, one in there, one over there and one over there. So we've shared them equally between two pots. How many are in each pot? Well, there are six flowers in each pot. 
we had 12, we shared them out into two pots and there are six in each pot. 12 divided by two equals six. And on to the next question. Again, we've got 12 flowers, but this time we were putting the flowers into groups of two, into pots of two. So there's one pot, let's put two in there. Here's another pot, two in there, 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 another pot, two in there. So all together we have used one, two, three, four, five, six pots. So there are six pots of two flowers. Twelve divided by two equals six. Twelve put into groups of two leaves us with six groups. So that question was grouping. Now let's have a little think. What would happen if we had 13 flowers? So for this question, we've got 13 flowers. Think about this in terms of sharing, if we had to share them equally between two pots, and grouping, if we had to put them into groups of two. So pause the video here for a couple of moments and see if you can work out what would happen in these questions. Come back once you've had a little think. OK, how did you get on with that? Well, let's have a little look at these 13 flowers. To begin with, we're going to try and share them equally between the two pots. Here we go. So we know that we have the equal amount in both pots, six in the first pot, six in the second pot. What shall I do with that other flower? Shall I put it in the first pot or the second pot? Well, if I put it into one of those pots, they wouldn't be equal. They wouldn't have the same in them. And when we share, we have to have equal amounts. So we've actually got one left over. We've got two pots of six flowers, but we've got one left over. Let's have a little think about our grouping question. So here, here are our 13 flowers. We're going to put them into groups of two, and we've put them into six groups of two, six pots. But again, we've got one flower left over. There are six pots of two flowers and there is one flower left over. So we couldn't share, we couldn't group them equally into groups of two without having a flower left over. Now here's something for you to think about. Thinking about sharing or grouping without having any flowers left over. Can you look at these three groups of flowers and which groups can be divided by two with no flowers left over. And you could do them by grouping or by sharing. So pause the video, have a little think of this question for a couple of moments. Could you uh, group five flowers? Could you group uh, six flowers? Or could you group seven flowers without any left over? Come back when you've had a little think. Okay, let's go through these together. So to begin with, we've got five flowers. And can we put them into groups of two or can we share them into two equal groups? Well, if we put them into groups of two, there's one group of two, there's another group of two. But look, we've got one flower that is left over. So we have got five flowers. We've tried to share them or we try to group them into twos. And we've ended up with two groups of two, but we've got one left over. And sometimes in maths, we talk about when we have one left over, we talk about it being a remainder. So this time we've got two groups of two with remainder one. So we could not uh, put those flowers into groups of two without any left over. Next one, there's a group of two, there's a group of two, and there's a group of two. So with six flowers, we could put them into groups of two. And we had three groups of two. There were none left over. There was no remainder. On to our seven flowers. Let's put these into groups of two. There's a group of two and another and another. And oh, look, we've got that one left over again. So with our seven flowers, we tried to put them into groups of two. We got three groups of two, but we had a remainder of one, we had one left over again. So we could only divide six equally into two groups. We couldn't do it with five or seven. Here's another question for you now. We've got 16 and it says 16 divided by two. Now there's another way that we can think about these questions and that is by using a number line. How many groups of two are there 
in 16. How many groups of two are there in 16? I can use my number line to count on in groups of two like this. There's a group of two and another and another and another and another group of two, another, another, and another group of two. And all together, there are eight groups of two. I've counted on in twos eight times from zero, zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So there were eight lots of two in 16. I could think about this a different way. So here's my number line, but I could also count backwards from 16 to find out how many groups of two there are in 16. So if I start at 16 and count back in twos, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2 and 0. And of course, we counted back in twos eight times. So there are eight groups of two in 16. Oh, look at this question. Now, this is a tricky one. This is a missing number question because we've got something divided by two equals 12. So with this question, if I put something into groups of two, I will end up with 12 groups of two. So something put into groups of two, I will end up with 12 groups of two. Well, let's do that. Let's put 12 groups of two. There we go. There are my 12 groups of two. So how much is that all together? I've got 12 groups of two. How many dots can you see there all together? To help me with this, I'm going to bunch these into sets of 10. There we go. So I can see one set of 10 in yellow, another set in red, and then I've got four uh, more yellow ones. So all together, that's a 10 and a 10 and a four. That's 24. So 24 shared into or put into groups of two means I'll have 12 groups of two. Another way of thinking about this would be if I put them, it, uh, shared them into two equal groups. So if I had a number and I shared it into two equal groups, I'd have 12 in each group. So I'd have 12 in that group and 12 in that group. So how many have I got all together? Well, I've got 24. And there's another way of thinking about this. So if I have got two groups of 12, I've got two groups of 12. If I multiply uh, my 12 by two, the answer to that would be 24. And we call that the inverse. 12 times two is 24. Let's try this another way. So I've got a mystery number here and I divide it by two and I end up with 10. So for this one, Again, if I use the inverse, if I know that I have got, I've got, to, uh, put them into, put my number, my mystery number into groups of two, and I've got 10 of them. If I think about 10 times two, because I've got my 10 groups of two, that would be 20. 20 divided by two equals 10. So I've used my inverse, I've used my knowledge of my two times table to work out the answer to this mystery number question. Now, it's time for you to do some work. So we have got three lots of problems for you to choose from today. Our canoeist problem, our boat problem, or our submarine problem. So we're gonna go through these one by one and you can decide whether or not you are going to do the canoe problem, which all of you should be able to do, the boat problem, which most of you will be able to do, or you might want to do the submarine problem, which some of you will be, will be able to do that one. You might decide you want to do all of them or have a go at all of them. So let's have a look at our first one. It says, complete the number sentences. So our first question says, Sonny has 10 muffins. He puts two on each plate, complete the calculations to show how many plates he needs. And you've got some missing numbers to fill in there. The pictures will help you. On to the next question. There are two equal bunches of cherries. There are 12 cherries all together. And again, you have to fill in the missing calculations using the pictures and using the numbers. Then the next question, you've got a picture there of some dots and they are putting them into groups of two. And again, you have to use the picture of the array to work out the missing number. So how many lots of two equal eight? Eight divided by two equals what? And onto the other one again, it's an array with groups of two. 
and it says something times two equals 16, and 16 divided by two equals something, filling the missing numbers. So if you want to try that one, pause the video here, and that should take you no more than about 15 minutes. Good luck with those ones. Okay, on to our next set of questions. And for this one, we have got some division calculations for you to complete. Some of them, you just have to solve and they're nice and straightforward. Some of them are mystery numbers are at the beginning. So you could use the inverse, just like we practiced to solve that one. Then on to the next one, we've got a couple of questions where you can continue to use your number line to work out the answer. Now there is a number line in your pack, remember, for you to use, or you could draw it out. And on to the final question. Alex has 22 pencils. She puts them into pots. Each pot has two pencils. How many pots does Alex need? So the number sentence is there for you. You've just got to work it out. So if you want to try those questions, pause the video. Should take you no more than 15 minutes. Good luck with that. And on to our last question. Here we go. Jack planted a magic bean on Sunday. On Monday, it had grown one centimetre tall. Then every day, it doubled in height. So it doubled on Tuesday, then it doubled again on Wednesday, and it doubled again on Thursday. How tall was it on Friday? So this is all about doubling. Doubling is multiplying by two. So if you'd like to try this one, I think 15 minutes is plenty of time to do this one. So have a go at that one. How tall will it be on Friday? Good luck. Okay, everybody, let's go through the answers. So first of all, the one with Sonny and his muffins, he puts two on each plate, complete the calculations, calculations to show how many plates he needs. 10 divided by two is five, and five lots of two is 10. There are two equal, oh, I've done the one underneath here. So here's our array, something times two, four times two equals eight, and eight divided by two equals four. Then we're going to go on to the cherry question. There are two equal bunches of cherries. There are 12 cherries altogether. 12 divided by two is six. Two times six is 12. And then onto the question at the bottom. How many lots of two makes 16? Eight lots of two is 16. And 16 divided by two equals eight. On to the next question. Let's go through these ones. Six divided by two is three. 10 divided by two is five. 14 divided by two is seven. And zero divided by two is zero. If you've got nothing to share out, you've got nothing. Then our mystery number questions. And remember, these were the ones we were going to use the inverse. Something divided by two equals five, 10. 10 divided by two is five. Five lots of two is 10. So for this next one, we could think of, well, six lots of two would be 12. 12 divided by two is six. Nine lots of two is 18. 18 divided by two is nine. 11 lots of two is 22. 22 divided by two is 11. On to the number line question. So 12 divided by two, we're counting backwards in twos here, and we counted back six times. 20 divided by two, counting back in twos, we counted back 10 times, 20 divided by two equals 10. And then Alex's question with the 22 pencils, 22 divided by two is 11, so Alex needs 11 pots. Well done if you got those ones correct. And on to quest the question with Jack's magic bean. So on Monday, I had grown one centimeter, and then it doubled every day. So on Tuesday, if it doubled, doubling is times by two, one times two is two. And then it doubles again. So on Wednesday, it's double. Two times two is four centimetres. Then it doubles again on Thursday. Four times two is eight. And then it doubles again. On Friday, it has grown to 16 centimetres. Well, then, if you got it correct, if you want to continue to challenge yourself, see how far you can go with doubling it every, uh, each day. How tall will it be on Saturday and Sunday and Monday? How far can, can you continue to double that number? So if you want to try that, good luck with that. I'd really like to see your answers. And that brings us to the end of today's lesson, dividing by two. And we are going to continue dividing tomorrow. So until then, have a lovely evening. And I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.